Hi, my name is Fraser Quelch. I'm the Director of Education and Programming at Fitness Anywhere. I'm here today in San Francisco at Diacati Body. This is one of the most innovative personal training and wellness centers in the country. Diacati is also a hub for some of the best personal trainers in the Bay Area, and we've got a bunch of them here to take them through a TRX orientation. To properly set up your TRX suspension trainer, you'll need to anchor it to a secure point that will support your body weight. Try sturdy beams, weight racks, heavy bag mounts, or railings. If possible, wrap the suspension anchor around your secure point several times to reduce lateral movement. Your anchoring point should be 7 to 9 feet off the ground and strong enough to support you. Fasten the black carabiner at the end of the suspension anchor between the yellow and black bar tacks at the appropriate interval for your anchor point so that the bottom of the foot cradles are 3 inches off the ground when the TRX is fully lengthened. Always weight test the TRX to ensure a solid anchor point prior to using. What I want to do to start off with is um, talk to you guys a little bit about how to set up the system, how to use it, lengthening it, shortening it, putting it into the different modes so you can really maximize its use. Um, the first thing is, lengthening the system is really easy, but sometimes I see people doing it one side at a time. All you really need to do is just grab, on, grab onto the buckles, push the buckles down, and just walk away from it. And it's very simple, right? It's just straight down there, so it's super, super easy. To shorten it, what I want you to do is push that down, grab onto the tab itself, and just bring it straight up. You've got to do it one side at a time. I'm sure you've all done this already, but it's good to review. The best thing for you to do is show your clients how to do it, and then you don't have to. You're not counters. They can count to 10. They can also adjust the system. So if you can say to them, hey, I want you to shorten the system all the way up, they can do it. You can be thinking about what you're going to do with them next, how you want them to look, and all that kind of thing. By empowering them, you'll find that you can clear your head for all of the other things that you need to think about. I want you to lie down on your back right here. All right. Put both fingers, I'm not going to do it for you, sit up. Um, put both fingers in the bottom of the loops. Okay. Now, the way most people will try and do it is one at a time. What you want them to do is do it both at once. So I want you to roll all the way back onto your back, arms apart, bring those heels right up in the middle and drop them right in. Okay, and extend them out. Super, super easy, really quick. Like I said, now try it, come on up just for the, just for the record. So sit up, take your heels out. Okay, grab onto the handles and try and put your foot in one at a time. This is the way most people will try and do it. And you can see it's way more awkward and it's much less likely for them to do it. And especially if they don't have a lot of mobility, that's really difficult. And that wasn't quite so elegant. So if you try and get those feet out again, grab onto the bottom loops, roll right back, heels in, and now they're ready to go. And so from there we can do all that supine work that's super, super easy. What I want you to do is, you sit in front of it just like this, grab onto the handles themselves. You know before we grabbed onto the loops, this time we're grabbing onto the handles. You're going to take your right foot, put it through the loop, take your left foot, cross over, and then I can roll in that direction. And I'm all set up to do any of that stuff I might do from my, with my toes in the system. Okay? I'll get you to try that, Gina. Sit down in front of the system. Good. Grab onto the handles. Perfect. Put your right foot into the left handle. Excellent. And then take your left foot, bring it across. Good. And you see how she let her knee fall out a little bit? That basically weighted that. Let's get that a little bit deeper. Good. And then from there, just roll in that direction. Point your toes as you go. Good. And then you can put your knees down, right? So she's nice and relaxed in that thing. If her toes were, if she dorsiflexed her toes as she rolled, her feet would get wrapped up in the system. So it's really important that as they roll, point your toes, it'll just pull over. Then if you want to dorsiflex to do the action from there, that works out fine. Hold the system one right over top of the other. From there you take the bottom handle, pass it through, 
Okay, boom. Take the bottom handle again, pass it through. Switch hands, lock it down. In this position, you want the handles to look like that. You see that's locked in tight. If I grabbed onto the wrong one, see how that looks a little bit differently? In that case, if I pull on it, it can fall through, and then it'll, I'll end up back here, okay? So it's really important to understand how it looks, especially if you're doing group training. If you're working with like two or three people at once, that's, uh, that's super key. So bottom through top, switch hands, bottom through top again, lock it down, and make sure that second handle is way up out of the way. That way you won't make a mistake and grab on to that, that, the wrong handle, configure it in the wrong spot. From here, we can do all sorts of single handle or single leg stuff. You can do things like that. We'll get into a bunch of the exercises that we're going to do later, but you'll use the single handle mode a lot once you know how to do it. The whole idea of teeing your feet is really important, okay? Um, for movements that are really big and long, like uh, for instance, this shoulder movement is a great example. See, I come up here and I mean, I might be strong enough to come out of the bottom, but see at the top, I run out of, I run out of effort and I'll probably end up having to step forward. Uh, if I'm a little bit weaker, you know, deep, more deconditioned, if I were to come up, well, there's my end range, and that's not right. We want to have resistance through the entire range of motion. So if I tee my feet or basically offset my foot position, then what I can do is I can come up and come straight through and rock from my back foot onto my front foot, meaning that I keep resistance the whole way through the motion. You'll apply that T-foot pr principle to all sorts of different exercises. This whole shoulder sequence, you'll want to tee your feet. Um, this, uh, this is a great, we call it a swimmer's pull. Again, a really long movement. You need basically multiple anchor points with your feet. The best example I can give you in terms of, oops, if I can actually get in this position, this is a great big, long functional movement that I wouldn't be able to do if I didn't have my feet really offset. Okay, so the whole idea of teeing your feet, rocking from your back foot onto your front is a really, really important concept and you'll use it constantly. The other really important thing with the teen of the feet, people have a smart and a dumb side, make sure that they're not always using their smart configuration, right? So whatever they present you first will be their smart side, notice that and then get them to lead with their other leg at the beginning of the set usually. So whatever they present, you say, oh, okay, that's great. Give me the other side. We'll go back to where you're strongest as you fatigue because that will just work it better with the movement. Give that a try. Yeah, good, and then straight up and overhead. Perfect. Good. Now take it a little bit deeper. So bring everything this way. Yep, good. Still have your feet teed. That's it. Nice. Now you see what we saw? Now he's a little bit deep with that back foot. So let's move this back foot back a little bit further and then bring that one back to where it was. Good. Now try. And we should be able to get there. Now he was able to do it with good form. Right before we saw that little elbow bend, that meant that he's actually using his rear delts to do it or uh, and trying to pull in his back. We want to keep that lever length long. Perfect. Nice job. We're going to start off with a simple row, and you guys mostly have seen it. Okay, so we're going to just pull yourself up. Now in this case, he's so shallow, we might even tee his feet to make it happen. Okay, so tee your feet a little bit, good. Now go down, and now come straight up, boom. All right, nice low elbow position. We'll, we'll keep it as a, low, as a low row. All right, so straight down, straight up, perfect. Now let's bring both your feet to about here, good. Now we position him a little bit steeper, he's going to feel that is a little bit harder. Still going to be easy for him because he's very strong, but for your clients, by bringing them a little bit steeper is going to make it more difficult. Now let's get your right to here. Bring your feet right to, right to mine. Good. Now you can see his angle's getting a little worse. And you can see he's, start, he's got a little bit of shimmy going on now, so he's, he's starting to work a little bit harder. Then what I could do is actually get him to go straight down. Drop your bum on the ground for a quick second. Good. Let's have your feet come up there. Here. Yep, straight there. Good. And now we're going to do that same low row. Boom. Okay, now he's really working. I don't know anybody who can rattle off 10 of those without feeling like they did something. <laughs> okay, so you can see the progression that we just did just with the back row. You can bring your feet down. Excellent. 
Now, what I want to show you is just a couple more things with that. So we take just a middle, middle kind of position with here. Good. Go back. Now we're going to work this 45 degrees. So turn the hands to about 45 degrees. And now you're going to come out on this angle. All right. Now we're working through a slightly different plane that's going to drive his back a little differently. Come up. Now a high row. Excellent. Okay, so you can see we're going through another progression of the exercise itself. Let go of the system for a second. Now if I put it into single handle mode and have him grab on, actually grab on with the other hand if you could. Perfect. Wide stance right about here. Good. Yep, now I want you to do is just lower yourself down, pull straight up. All right, now we've got ground reaction force coming up and through. It's a single arm movement. Now I want you to bring this hand right up to me. Use me as a hand target. So come up, rotate, boom. Now we're going to open all the way up and reach for the ground as you lower. So lower down, yep, here. yep. And come all the way up. Good, so now I've got single hand with rotation. If we want to bring that in more, I want you to now make contact with my hand at the top. Come up, make contact, and push. Oh. There we go, all the way down, boom. Okay, so now we're making it a little bit combative. Now he's pushing harder. Okay, now he's going to push really hard. Don't let me move you. Good. Now I'm going to throw him. Okay? So he's up. And it becomes. Now he threw himself down there that time. Keep pushing. <laughs> That's it. One more. Boom. Okay, good. And you probably felt all yeah. of that working through your core. So as soon as I made him make contact, he closed off that chain, started to work rotationally through his core a lot harder, still working with that one arm. So there's an example of how to take that back row and take it from the very bottom, drive it all the way up to something that's single handle and really complex. Imagine you're starting with the most deconditioned client. Come in here, face me, grab onto these handles. Now when you're giving somebody the handles, you want to make sure that the buckles face out, okay? Arms are straight, straighten out your arms and move your feet back a bit. Perfect, arms are straight. Now, you see how right now it's just slightly above his arms, right here? What some people will do is they'll try and, this, these are not stable, okay? They're stable enough for you to do lots of work with, but if you're too steep, if your steepness overcomes the stability that you have in your shoulders, people will move their arms down and try and stabilize it using this, which means they're gonna get great big red marks on their arms from it rubbing. So if you see that it's rubbing, just cue them to bring their feet forward a little bit. Bring your feet forward a bit, good. And that's easier. They're, they're going to be able to self-stabilize, and they won't get the really red marks. Okay, that's one of the things that people will commonly mention to you. So, put one foot in front of the other. Okay, this gives people a feeling, a sense of security. So again, if you're working with someone who's really deconditioned, I want you to lower yourself in, right? Press up and lower your, and press yourself away. Perfect. Okay, that's very, very easy for you. But again, for your really deconditioned client, this is a great place to start. From there, move your feet, your front foot back and widen your stance. So a wide stance like that gives them the most stability. You can challenge them with the most strength. Do another push up or chest press. Excellent. And now what I want you to do is keep going back. Take a big step back. Try it again. Now he's going to start to work a bit harder. Good, just there. And you can see all of a sudden now his shoulder stabilizers are really working hard. Now I want you to take your feet right to the very back so you're in a full push up position and straight down and straight up. Now he could probably do 40 push ups in a row, but I bet he can't do 40 of those. You'll find that usually even with high performance folks, 10 or 15 of those and they're spent, okay, because of all the extra neurological stuff that's going on. Come on forward again. Um, from there, I want you so you're here, go a little bit deeper than that. Perfect. Bring your feet together now. So now we're going to challenge stability by messing with this base of support. So you can do a uh, chest press there. Excellent. Now if I get you to take your right foot just off. Excellent. Do another one. Just extend it out a little bit. So if you guys are, if, if you're right here in front, you'll be able to see as soon as that foot comes off the ground, you can start to look for this hip to pop out a bit. Now he's pretty stable, but you can see by the expression on his face that he's working pretty hard to stabilize his middle. If they can't do it, bring them forward a little bit. Yep. Right? Take some of the, deep, the, the steepness out of it. Excellent. Now I want you to take that uh, left foot and put it out to the side. Now, watch that hip. You guys can see as soon as we did that, his hips started to bend out a bit. Make sure you're lowering your hips to the ground. Don't do it with your head. Good. Try it. Good. Now he's thinking about it. That's getting close to his edge. Now we could take that foot, bring it right out in front. Good. Keep the head up nice and high. So look up at the wall, lower down. And now he's, he's, he's experiencing this huge rotational force because what we've done is taken his center of gravity, pulled it not only out in front, but off to the side a little bit. Now bring your foot right back. So say he's strong as he is and I want to challenge him more. I don't have to necessarily put him deeper. Come on. Same position. Okay. 
So a little bit deeper, just, just okay, that's lots. Bring your feet right together. So he takes one foot off, and I know he can do those all day long, but, so take one foot off. Now what I want you to do is take that uh, right foot and inch it that way just a tiny little bit. Oh yeah, just, just a little bit. Okay, now put that other arm, or the other leg straight out, and do that, that press. Okay, yeah, you see now I just, that's perfect. I just hit his threshold. You saw him struggle with it right at the very bottom but he's still able to stabilize it. If he, if he, once he gets successful there, I can move that foot just a... Now he's gotten smart. He's moving it just a little ways. Because it's just a tiny little bit makes a massive difference. So, as you're working with your clients, pay attention to one, are you training strength or stability with them? If you're training strength, use a nice wide stance and get them deep, or as deep as they can handle. If you want to target more stability, then what you can do is get them into a single leg stance and then just sort of Play around with where that foot position is. If you pay attention to where their foot is underneath their center of gravity, you can totally tweak this. The shoulder sequence, we, we sort of, we, we went through a little bit of it already, right? Um, so grab one of those handles. We're going to go through basically five different positions. So it'll be low, T, W, Y, and I, okay? So we'll walk you through it. So the first thing when you're doing this shoulder, this shoulder sequence is always with a teed foot position. So to your feet, yeah, and come a little bit steeper. You can come a little bit steeper. Start off with your palms kind of just like that, good? Yep, just straighten arms, straighten arms, good. Just like that, good. And now as you open up, I want you to look up at the ceiling, good, and you gotta step forward. So you're gonna have to step forward a little bit further onto that foot. Okay, let's just do three to that position. So lower down, drive up, boom, right out wide. Excellent, good. Step forward a little bit more. Make sure you go through that full range. Right step forward, good. You see how that step forward allowed her to move through the full range of motion? One more. Good, squeeze those shoulder blades together, nice. The very next one, go three to T position. So hands are straight together, go straight out this time. Perfect, All right. Again, now, you see how you came back? You were mostly on your feet on this system because there's a big loop here. So as you guys are training it, pay attention to what's happening up here. If there's a bunch of slack, you'll be able to adjust that. So this time, keep, keep the strength running through your shoulders. Okay, so step right forward into that T. Good, and now fall back on it. Fall back slowly. Good, that's much better, yep. One more. Brilliant. Okay, now we're going to come up into a W, like this. So bend those elbows, good. And with some of these, you notice how she needs to step forward a little bit more with that one. So as you come up in the W, step forward. There, you should be able to feel your scapular tract and you were just on your foot again. Come, come a bit steeper. Come a bit steeper with that back foot. There you go. Give that a try. Excellent. Good. Up high. That's it. And now straight overhead for three. Right up. See this? Get that slack out. Get the slack out. Come straight up high. Excellent. And down one more. All right. Good. So what's happening is, come on out. So Gina's having a hard time keeping tension on the system at the very top. And really what we need to do is look at her foot position. And as she plays with it, you'll figure it out. What we look for is as you're coming up, you basically want to make sure that you're in a steep enough position with this front foot that you can't actually stand. If you're standing on that back foot, there's that slack. If I'm leaning against it, the slack goes away. Okay, so as, as you're working with your clients, Watch for that slack at the top. If it is, chances are their weight is on their back foot. You want to get their weight to their front foot. That'll get the slack out. If you're dealing with someone who's very advanced, you actually can do this in a single handle mode, again, with a teed foot. Now I'm getting rotational force. Got to get that back foot back a little bit. There it is. OK, so that's much different. I'm using a single arm to do it. Again, ground reaction force is going through my body a little bit differently. I've got some rotational forces. As you're dealing with someone who's very functional, working at a high level, you'll be able to play around with that. All right, so in terms of progression, so we're still working through progressions, right? Starting from easiest, going to hardest. The next one I want to show you is for your arms. Um, actually, come on over. So I've already played with you. <laughs> All right, so. Um, both, yep, I want you to lean back against it. This time we don't have to tee your feet because it's a really short, direct action. 
Bring your feet here. Good. So we want his elbows nice and high. We don't want to turn this into a back row. Okay? So what I want you to do is curl your hands right to your temples. Now, you see that back row? That's what we didn't want. Okay. So come so down. Elbows stay high. Further. No, 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 no. You won't have to go further. I want it just as a bicep movement. So bring your, bring your hands up. Up. Higher. There we go. Now okay. just uncouple. Just let your hands go straight out. Hands go straight out. No. Lower down. Lower no. down. Okay, jump over there for a second. Let me show you. What we're looking for is those elbows to stay high okay. and pull right to your temples like that. So that okay. was that okay. row that you did. Presentation curl. Yep. So curl straight up. That's it. Perfect. And go nice and slow with it to begin with. Okay. Now, again, we can see he's really strong. So if he is, boom, down we go. Yep. Now, what we wanted to do, you see how you just had to fall mm -hmm. against the system? Yeah. Which for you, you're strong and confident. That won't be a problem. Right. But your average client, if you put them in a position here and say, all right, just go back. That's pretty scary, right? Because they have to fall back. So walk them back okay. till there's tension. Extend your arms. Extend your arms all the way out. Yep. There. Now you can lean against it. Walk them under. Right? That's a much more confident space for them to be. And now they can pull up. Perfect. And straight down. And if you need to adjust them at the bottom of the next movement, walk the feet forward just a little bit. Good. Now try it from there. Excellent. Now you see how you use that with your back. Come straight, just your temples, just your temples. There you go, and straight down again. Perfect, okay? That's just a, a straight isolation high curl, okay? The next progression from there is something called the bicep clutch. So this time I'll show it to you again. You're gonna take it right from here, and you're gonna pull straight in like that. So see my hands don't start off wide. They're just about four inches apart, maybe six inches apart. The yep, exactly. Good, yep, nice, steeper, get those elbows up nice and high. Okay, so pull right to your sternum. Straight, there you go, that's it, perfect. If you work with anybody who's a combative athlete, anybody who has to do any kind of clutching and grabbing, or, or like any sort of combative sport, this is an amazing exercise for it, because it's very much like pulling someone towards you or moving somebody about, so there's a, it's a great movement for that. Okay, good. Uh, there's another one I'll show you. We call it the beach bicep curl. You'll see why in a second. What I want you to do is grab it with your left hand facing this way. Okay. Okay. In that position, come a little bit steeper, just a touch. Good. Lean straight out. And what I want you to do is curl right up to there. Good. A little bit steeper that hand. Good. Lower straight okay. down. Bring this. Don't don't let your hips go on you. Bring this square. foot. Bring this foot here. No, not square. Facing me. Whole body faces me. If you turn your hips to face me. This way. There you are, and now you can pull straight up. Good. And straight down. Straight up. Excellent. Tricep movements. The most basic one, who have a knife? Oh, we're all the way around. No, I haven't played with you yet. Come on over. Um, come face me. Grab onto those handles. Um, start off with palms out. Perfect. Move your feet back just a little bit. Okay. And all I want you to do is just a, just a tricep press. Good. So straight down, straight up. You'll find with this exercise that if his arms are lower, bring your arms down, down further. Good. And come straight to your nose. Many people will feel this in their, in their elbows a little bit. Okay. The fix for it seems to be just move your hands higher and the elbow pain will go away. If they don't feel confident there, all they have to do is bring a foot forward into lunge stance. Good. And now they'll feel like if they fall down, they're not going to land on their nose, which is how they might feel if they're not confident when their feet are together. Okay, perfect. Um, and as you go steeper, now for you, let's take you down a little bit. Let's take you out here. You can see his core is gonna be pretty engaged in this layout position straight down. What you want to watch for in this position, if they're very weak in their core, you might see a sag in their belt line, right? That means that they've lost stability here. Chances are their core can't support this movement, so bring a leg in front, take the stress off their core. That way you can still work triceps safely, and you know from watching that that they've got a, a core stability issue that you're going to have to deal with kind of later on. Perfect. Nice job. Um, next thing, I want you to, uh, I'll show this one to you as well. Feet teed, elbows right at your sides like this, and you're straight up and through in this kickback. Okay, so straight down. 
The mistake with this one, if you want to isolate it, you've got to keep your elbows at your side. Otherwise, you end up rowing and then tricep extending, which is a fine movement. It's just a little bit bigger, a little bit longer, a little bit more coordinated. Give that a try. So tee those feet. Excellent. Not quite that big of a tee. Bring that feet. Yeah, there we are. And probably steeper with this front foot. All right, now try. So you want to come straight up and through. Perfect. And then lower right down. Good. Excellent. OK, so you can see the first one, that tricep press, we had his hands pronated. We could have done it with his hands supinated. This one, his hands are supinated as he comes through. Excellent. You can probably feel that as you extend your triceps working pretty hard. Excellent. All right. Last one I want to show you for your triceps is something I call uh, the preacher tricep press. Basically kneeling in front of the system like this. You're going to fall down onto it and drive up away. Now, that can look pretty hard. There's lots of core stability. I don't have to go out that far. All I got to do is position my butt back a little bit and I can make that as easy or as hard as I want to. Okay? Give that a try. And this might bug your knees just a little bit. This floor is hard. We don't have a mat down. So. Excellent. So you're here in that position. Drive your head right between your hands. Yeah, there we go. And then up. Good. So that's the nice easy way. Now you may find people say, I don't feel this in my triceps because they're just going down and up using their extensors. You'll see that when it happens. Just say, turn your extensors off. You'll be just fine. And now drive up. Good. Now he's going to feel a bit of a core engagement here because the center of gravity is in front of his knees. Now try and go way out with it. So roll down, bend the knees and straight up, boom, straight down and straight up. And you can see that's really demanding on a lot of different levels. Okay, so when we're talking about progressions, start off with that standing one. You can control it once they've got that. Then you'll be able to move to the, uh, the kickback. And after that, then you can go to the preacher tricep press. To begin with, for squatting, you may have somebody really deconditioned. Uh, maybe they're, they're very elderly and they, they're just trying to keep it so they can not be limited to a wheelchair or so they can get up from the kitchen table. You can use this as a support or assist. So in this case, just squatting straight down and pulling straight up. Even if it's just a shallow squat, I can use this to help me with confidence, okay? So straight down, straight up. From there, we can go to maybe a single leg squat. Maybe it's just shallow to begin with. Maybe from there, it turns in to be a little bit deeper. Okay, let's, uh, let's get, get you to try this, Gina. So start off just with that nice assisted squat. Good. Now you could go steeper if you wanted to. So bring your feet here a little bit. Some people find steeper loads their upper body a little bit more. It's a bit easier for their lower body. Try that. Lower down, good. Come on up. You can play around with foot position, bringing your feet wide. It's like a plie squat, good, loading glutes a little bit more or bringing your feet a little bit closer together into a pure sagittal plane squat. As they're doing this, have a look at their bodies. You'll be able to learn all sorts of things about them. I can see that Gina's got some tight, uh, some tight rotators because as she does this, this foot really <laughs> wants to externally rotate at her hip and that's something, you don't, need, you don't have to tell her that. All you got to do is look and say, okay, that's something that we're going to need to address. I can see that I've made you blush. I'm sorry. <laughs> Perfect. So um, now what I want you to do is go back a little bit and we'll move to a single leg squat. So squat down. Good. Nice and slow. Now, say if you want to get somebody to the point where they can do a single leg squat. Um, from this position, what I want you to do is squat all the way down, right to the ground. Okay. Um, actually, come back up again. I want you to move your feet forward to about here. Good. Now squat all the way down so your bum actually touches the ground. Good. From here, we can look at her mobility by trying to get her to pull up onto her feet. So pull, no, stay in the squat position and just rock forward. Oh, okay. So bring those knees forward, up, 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 up. Yeah. Try and keep coming. All right, so I just learned that Gina has excellent mobility and is probably already a really good squatter because see, I've got slack here, right? And she's got great, uh, her, her torso is the same angle as her tibia. That's a great squat position. She can just stand up from there and I know I can progress with her because she's got the mobility to squat very, very well already. Bring your feet right together. Okay, do the same thing. Come straight down. Like lean back? Yeah, yeah lean back, lean back. Bum to the ground. Okay, now pull forward into that squat position. Good. Heels are on the ground. Now what I want you to do is extend one leg all the way out. 
Good. Now, if there's any rotation at all, she needs to sit down and stop. She's not ready for this, but I know she is. Okay, put that back. This is called a single leg pier. Again, she's not using this very much. That's perfect. Most people will really be loading this quite a bit as they learn to do this. She's pulled herself forward. Let's have that one leg come out. Good. A little bit more of a wobble on this side. That's probably that same hip thing that we saw before, but it's okay. Bring that leg back. Good. Now what I want you to do is bring this leg out and use the system as little as possible, but stand up. Perfect. Really nice. And then you do that on the other side. Once you can do that, I know she's almost ready to do a single leg squat all by herself, but we could just do a single leg squat leaning back. So single leg squat down. Yep. Straight down deep and come straight up and away. Good. Then you can start to add a little bit of tempo, maybe not quite as deep this time. So go down, come up, go down, come up. So now we're challenging you a little bit more. Now I want you to do is come down and jump. So okay. go down just to, just to there and now power up, jump. Boom. Like and that. go down again. Yeah, except with more jump. There we go. And then she can start to sequence that together so it's continuous. So pop and down, pop and down. Good. Excellent. And that starts to get really, really demanding. So we're talking about squatting. Well, I mean, we got, I got lucky. I chose someone with great mobility who could already almost do a single leg squat without anything at all, which is awesome. Um, you could bring power into that and take it all the way up. This just adds a little bit of support for squatting. I recently worked with someone who was post hip replacement and we actually got her to lunge again. She'd lost her lunge motor pattern completely because she'd been, had pain for so long. And we use this as a balance assist just like we did with a squat. So what I want you to do is assume a long lunge stance. Good. You're just using this for balance. You're going to lunge straight down and come straight up. Now if you weren't as strong as you are, maybe you'd load this a little bit more. You could use it to help. So go down, load it a bit with your arms. Good. And then use it to pull yourself up just a little bit. Okay, so you can see someone really deconditioned, maybe they're really heavy, maybe they're dealing with some sort of injury, you can get it back by using this. If that worked out okay, then what we could do is bring your feet forward. Now what I want you to do, move back just a touch, both feet, good. Now what I want you to do is do a step back lunge and come back forward using this again for balance. Step back, good, come up, all right. Lots of people have a hard time with that motor pattern at first, you'll know from working with your own clients. So this is a good way to get it, then you can get rid of it as they just get used to their own body weight. Then what we can do is use it for a bit of balance, and all you're going to do is go back, this foot stays off the ground and lower the knee so it almost touches but not quite. Yep. Yeah, good. And come back up, load this a little bit more, so lean back. Excellent. So that's a balance lunge. Then what you can do is try and cross that leg over as you do that balance lunge, so it drops behind you. Yep. Okay, so now we're starting to see, he's used to working in that sagittal plane. As soon as we moved him transverse, it didn't go that well. Let's try it again. Drive across. Good. Now, where do you feel that? Uh, on the right side. This glute? Yeah. Okay. So if you want to load somebody's glute or they're, they're complaining, yeah, my glutes aren't working, they're not firing, you get somebody from physio and their glutes aren't firing from pain, this is a great way to turn them on. Drive that leg across. Let me see it again. Drive it across. Good. And give them a hand target. Reach for this hand with that foot. Boom, that really loaded his glute, I could tell. <laughs> Try it again. Perfect, okay. So, as strong as he is, I know that neurally, he doesn't work that well in that transverse plane, so that's something that I could work on, okay? From here, you can start to add all sorts of things. From that lunge to a step across, there, step across, so that starts to get a little bit more athletic. Um, we can start to add power with that balance lunge, okay? There's a million different things you can do from a lunge pattern off of that. Uh, we can also start to bring in the BOSU. So here I've got this BOSU. I need to move it back just a little bit. So now in this position, now I'm not balanced as much. I can do that balance lunge. Give that a try. It's in the sagittal plane. I know you're going to be solid. <laughs> OK, so you straight up. Yep. Good, try and reach back with that leg. Kick it back. Yep, kick it back just like we did, good. Excellent, so you can see him trying to balance actually by internally and externally rotating that hip. Try it one more time. So he would never be able to do that without a little bit of assistance. Now we've given him basically neurally something that's really demanding and we can probably fire a bit more muscle fibers as we're going along. The suspended lunge. From single handle mode, what I'm going to need to do is just put one foot up this way. Then I can come straight out 
in this position, I can go straight down, come straight up. Notice I start off going very slow. I want to make sure I've got good stability throughout. So I can come straight down, straight up. I want to probably start off here. Makes it simpler. Once I've got that movement, I can add a gate pattern to it. Straight down and up. Then I can start to add tempo. Whoops. I can start to add tempo this way. And then I can even add power. Okay. All of those things, you saw that progression. We started off slowly. Then I can switch directions. Move here. Remember we were talking about the transverse plane a second ago. Well, if I can load like that, just by twisting my body, now my leg is being pulled back. That's really loading my glutes strongly. That's a progression again. To progress further, I guess you just throw the ball to me, boom. I can come down, throw it back at you. Okay, that's the problem now. Hold on a second. What I want you to do is pass it to me offline. So pass it to me this side. Ooh. That's a bunch more forces. We'll try that one again. Second, let me catch my leg again. Oh no, I'll tell you. Okay. Boom, back to center. Straight down and up. Other side. Okay, now this time I'm gonna go down. I want you to throw it up high for me to go get. Back, throw it even higher. That's it. You can see that starts to get very, very athletic. And I know it is because I can feel that my, my down leg was really working. That suspended lunge is the progression from the balance lunge. And then you can take it way, way up high to as hard as you can possibly do. And some of those last exercises are exceptionally athletic. You can use that with, we're using it with pro athletes. So you won't, you won't run out of people to use that one with, at least on the high end. So in this position, I just want you to engage down, leave your hips on the ground, and pull your knees towards your chest. Knees towards your chest. You can feel your hamstrings engage as you do that, and come back out again. So again, somebody who's very heavy, deconditioned, or just not nearly ready for it yet, you can start them here. Then bridge up, take your hips off the ground. Perfect. You see how his toes are nice and straight, knees are nice and straight. Do that same hamstring curl, pulling straight under and straight out. He's gonna feel his hamstrings working a little harder. Nice. Now, if I wanna work him harder, I can tell him to raise his hips higher as you come. So bring those hips up. Nice. And that's much, much more difficult. Now, the other way I can make it easier for him, bring your hips down. See how right now I'm positioned sort of right underneath the anchor point. If I move him this way about a foot, slide yourself in quite a bit. Now when he comes up in that same position, gravity's gonna swing it into him. That probably feels lots easier, right? Alternatively, I know he's super high performer, so I'm going to move him that way about two feet. Go that way. <laughs> good, that's good. That's lots. And now he's going to do that same hamstring curl, and now gravity's working in my favor and not his, and he's going to tell you that that's a lot more difficult. One of the things that's really important when you're working with folks, pay attention in the suspended positions where the system is or where his position is is in relation to neutral, which is straight up and down. If he's back here behind neutral, it's going to be easier. If he's out here in front, it's going to be a lot harder. So choose that neutral point on purpose and, and roll from there. Okay? Um, one of the other things that we can do, if we, wanted to, if we wanted to make it a little bit different, we could internally rotate him at the hips so both his toes and his knees are touching. Get your knees to touch too. Bridge up. And let's do that same hamstring curl. All right, by changing that angle, it's going to isolate him a little bit different. We're gonna get uh, his, um, part of his hamstrings a little bit different. Biceps femoris gets taken out of it a little bit. Semitendinosus and semimembranosus work a little bit harder. Perfect, and you can probably feel the difference as you're rolling along. So what I want you to do is just sort of slightly externally rotate, and now do that same movement. Good, and curl in. Is that a little bit harder for you? You probably turn on glued a little bit as you externally rotate. Right. Perfect. Okay, this is a little bit harder than that last one for your hamstrings. What you're going to do is hold this knee position here and drive Lock your, no, them. no, just, okay. just like that. And take your hips and drive them straight up in the air in a hip press. Good, and then straight down. Don't, don't let that, just up and down. Up and down. Good, straight up and straight down, okay? And the last one is come up and bridge, open up those legs, 
Good. And now pull one knee in at a time in that bicycle. Straight in, straight out, but try not to get that. Do that it. Rotating. That um, rotating. Okay? okay? So we're going to do eight to each position. <laughs> okay, so let's bring those hips up okay. and start off with a hamstring okay. curl. So that's good. How much do you want me to use my abs to stabilize here? Uh, I mean, you're going to have to use them a fair bit, right? It's compound movement. Pull those knees right in. Good. Dorsiflex the toes a little bit. Pull those toes towards me. And out. Pull those toes towards me. Don't point them. Yep. Dorsiflex the yeah, whole dors time? Yeah, dorsiflex the whole time. Good. Good. And come straight forward. Good. Almost done. All right, now let's try that hip press. Pull the knees right into me and drive up and then straight down and up. Eight of them. Higher. Good. Straight line. Knees, hips to shoulders. Drive up. Good. Hamstrings and glutes should work pretty hard. Good. Don't rest to the bottom. <laughs> straight up, straight down. Excellent. Last couple. Good. Straighten those legs out. And now pull them in one at a time, slowly. Bicycle for 16, eight each side. Good. Try to equalize it. No, you gotta, you gotta just equalize one side to the other. Yep, there we go. One of the things you can do as a trainer if the person's having a hard time stabilizing it is just give them some support and friction at the top. Go ahead. Straight through. Excellent. So what we saw with him was kind of a hard time stabilizing here. With that, what you wanna do is do a little bit of single leg work and start off by giving a little bit of friction here and then slowly letting that friction go a little bit and neurally you'd come along. If you're not used to using the system, sometimes it takes a little bit of getting used to to do that stabilization. It doesn't take very long knowing you'll be able to rock right along. Along the same theme of progression, right? Wanting to start from easiest and up. Before you get anybody into a suspended position, all you're looking for is ability for to do a, a nice prone plank. So just to go through it, I want you to come down just on your hands and, or your elbows and your, and your toes. Make sure your toes are dorsiflexed and come straight up into that prone plank. Again, what we're looking for is a straight line, shoulders, hips, knees and elbows. Bring up, I'm down just a little bit. Okay, and you're looking for a neutral pelvis. There we go, enter pelvic tilt. If you've seen that posterior pelvic tilt, it means that, um, that they're, uh, basically their stabilizers are not holding on to their pelvis and their spine as well as they could. So some transverse abdominus stuff is important. Ideally, I like to try and do this for about 60 seconds. If they can do that, I know they're ready to have their tail end destabilized in the system. Okay, so use that as sort of a, here's a benchmark, a prerequisite before you start suspending people. Okay, you're good. So what I want you to do is lie down on your back, head on this end, toes way, way out here. Okay. So if you've got somebody who can't hold that plank for a little while and you just want to use the system to help with that stabilization, you can start them from a supine position here. So what we're looking for is about a 30 degree angle of their arms from the ground and an open hand grip. Okay, so open hand grip. And all I want you to do is engage down hard in the handles. So press into those handles. You'll immediately feel your core engage, right? It's a great way to start to get them to engage and stabilize their spine. As a trainer, I can grab onto this and feel tension. From there, let's bring your feet all the way up and see if they can just hold their feet up there. Now, you may run into hamstring flexibility. Just be aware of that. From there, start to move your heels out just to my hand. Good. Make sure they're still able to stabilize. Bring them back. Out to my hand again. Good. Come back. Out to my hand again. Good. All right, he can just go through those simple leg raises, except because he's engaging down here, you're feeling that's probably a little bit different than your average leg raise. Then you can stand here and move them through this oblique leg raise, down and around me, back up, down and around me. Make sure as a trainer when you're in this position, you're protecting yourself at all times. <laughs> so straight up and down. If you want to, as the person gets a little bit better, you can add a little bit of an impulse down. You felt them go a little bit harder. Right? You don't have to push very hard. It's not like the old-fashioned way of standing straddling the person's head with their hands there. You don't have to throw them hard. Okay, you just have to give them just a little impulse and it works fine. The other thing to do in this position is grab on tight, bring your toes right to my hand, and just have them keep contact with your hand. Push hard, keep pushing hard as you can. Keep this tight, there it is. And as soon as I felt this go tight, I felt more pressure here. He was able to close the chain. He's starting to work kind of hard now. Make sure they're breathing. Good, then what we can do is keep contact with this foot, lower this one all the way down. Good, keep contact, keep contact, hard contact, down and back up. Excellent, good stuff. 
Okay, so that's some great ways, sort of old school ways of training the core, except by adding the system into it makes it much harder. At the very top end of that is something uh, that looks a lot like a sit-up, but it's different. So on the way down, he's going to push and lower slowly. So push down and lower slowly, curl back, curl back, slow, slow, slow. Don't let the bottom drop out. Let's try it again. Come on up. Okay, some sit-ups are due for you. All right. <laughs> and down nice and slowly. Slow, slow, slow. Okay, curl, slow. Don't let the bottom throw out. Slack, watch the slack. Keep it down. Push, push, push. Good, slow. And that's probably harder than any sit-up you've ever oh, done yeah. before. Okay, by pushing down creates a negative force and you're just not used to handling. It's a tremendous sit-up exercise. But to begin with, what I would do with you is Make sure you got a threshold number of sit-ups. And it's amazing. Some people can have really strong cores in other, in, uh, other areas, but you make them go through just a different movement, and it's very, very difficult for them. So just adjust back, but you can recognize what you need to train with that person. Okay, so let's go back to that planking. Um, I'll get you to put your toes in the system. So sit down, one foot in. Nope, toes in, toes in. Yep, like that, good. This one crosses over, toe in, and roll towards me this time. There you go, perfect. Okay, so let's go. I've got this Eric's pad. Put your elbows on it. Okay, and just come up into this prone plank. Okay, bum down a little bit. There's that neutral pelvic tilt. Okay, you want to make sure those elbows are right underneath your shoulders or behind like that. That's all good. And again, we can just have him hold that. That in itself is much, much harder than before. Then what we can do is have him pull his knees up and under to his chest, both at once. Good. Try it again. Lift those hips up nice and high. Nice. Now try one knee at a time. One knee. Another one. Excellent. Okay, now try both knees to this elbow. Good. Another side. Now at this point, sometimes, if they've got the upper body strength, rest for a second. What we do is bring them up onto their hands. So in the push-up position, try that. Same thing, both knees under. Good, both knees to one elbow. Good, both knees to other elbow. We got some great rotation there. Now with keeping these knees straight, I want you to pike straight up overhead. Boom, all right, we run into hamstring flexibility. So straight up, excellent, very good. And you can feel that gets to be pretty demanding. Okay, comes out, rest for a second. The next thing we're going to do is actually cause some movement. We're going to get more and more athletic. Think about our progression again. This has been fairly isolated, fairly slow. What you're going to do is bring your hands forward just to about here. Excellent. I want you to come up into that, uh, that same plank, except this time I want you to start swinging your legs from side to side like a gymnast. Side to side. Good. Back and forth. Back and forth. Swing them a little faster, a little harder. Excellent. All right, now we've got some good rotation happening here. He's still stable. His bum is nice and high. Rest for a second. What I want to make sure is that you never get that concave thing happen. If their hips drop below their shoulders, that's putting stress on their lumbar spine. They're going to feel that right away. That's the end of the exercise, okay? Then you need to back up, recognize that as you go along, they'll be able to do that for longer and longer. Now what we're gonna do is that swing, except you're gonna swing three times and then hold it on the outside, just for a quick second. From here, part of it's learned, which is why. So I get into that swinging motion, I come out. <clears throat> so you just hold it for a second and then let it swing. <sighs> So that's the way to, to do that. That little hold gives you an incredibly difficult and demanding kind of negative slash isometric thing. You can only hold it for a second and then go back into rhythm, do it on the other side. And again, that's on the high end of it. So put your toes in the system again. Moving on in terms of intensity, we got some, some movement there, a little bit of oblique work. We're still presenting ourselves to gravity frontally. So that's putting a lot of work here through our stabilizers. What I want you to do, yep, down there on those elbows. This is something called the body saw. So again, a little bit higher, good. What we're going to do is watch the position here at his shoulders. He's going to open back and then come back forward. Don't let how small this movement is fool you. This is incredibly demanding. So hips stay nice and high, up a little bit, just a bit, good. And go out as far as you can and then come forward. The whole aim of the game is not breaking through the hips. Two, do two more. Excellent. Now on this next one, you're going to go back slowly and then come forward, knees under chest. And now pull those knees under your chest. Boom, explosively. So go back slow, come forward hard. Oop, so he sagged a little bit. Don't go back quite so far. So back and now forward. Boom. That's it. 
back, and you can even turn that into a pike. Okay, excellent, good stuff. Okay, so that's the body saw. Again, very, very demanding. And you can see it from his face. He's a big, strong guy, and he was working really hard. See now, top foot's in front of bottom foot, heel to toe, just like that. He's on his elbow. He's going to take this top hand now. There's a bunch of ways to progress this. I get off just being on the ground, side plank on the ground. Now we've destabilized, so this in itself is progression. His hand is on the ground. That's where to start. From here, hand to hip. Okay, if they're good there, hands straight up in the air, look up that hand. Boom, and extend. Again, this starts to get very difficult. Now what we want to do is have him start rotating around. As a trainer, stand behind him, present a target, so the target's right under here. Rotate under, bring your hand to, uh, bring your hand to my hand. Underneath, underneath, reach underneath, there it is, boom. And now come all the way up, and look up that hand, right to me, right to me, right to me. Good, and back under again. Make sure this shoulder stays right over top of elbow, straight under. It's doing a nice job. This is incredibly demanding. You can see how stable he is. All the way up, perfect, and down and rest. Okay, so that sequence. Here's the one, remember I was telling you, you want to roll them towards you. Don't roll yet. Now, the hard thing, have you ever done this from your hand before? Yeah. All right. <laughs> We're going to try it from the hand. This is very, very difficult. So same thing, like except it. as opposed to an elbow, here you're going to be on a hand. Yeah, face the same way. So start off, see that hand is down. Let's progress it, hand to bum, or hip, good. Hand straight up, good. Oh, okay, and down and rest. Don't try and hang on to it so tight that you hurt your shoulder, so go down. So straight up, good, bring that hand in a little bit, that's better, good. And straight under, try and come under my hand. Good, okay, and down and rest, excellent job. So you can see where his threshold is. He was really strong and stable from that broad base of support with his elbow. As soon as we got him up on his hand, got a little bit harder. So again, from elbow, hand on ground, hand on hip, hand straight up, driving under with a little pike, and straight up again. Right now? Yep. Okay, throw it a little bit harder. Get a bit closer to me if you could. There it is, right to me. Okay, so that's a progression up. Now we're adding an external force to it. It's much, much harder. That progression to your hand again. Now we've got a two-point stance to here, to there. There's the touch. I'll try that one again. <coughs> like that. Now, again, that's super, super demanding. Most people have a very difficult time with that. If you've got someone who's really, really strong, you could actually use something like an Eric's pad. Now we've got some instability on the front end as well. And that's a little bit beyond my own threshold. So there you go. Again, right from the bottom all the way to the very, very top. The nice thing is, is using the TRX, you can easily flow from one to the next. So in this case, I can come out, just get a nice chest stretch, and I can change the angle of this chest stretch easily just by working through a range of motion. Again, I'm in a nice lunge stance. I want to avoid this big arch in my back, so make sure I've got a neutral pelvis as I drive forward. From here, it's very easy to transition from front to back. Okay, so remember that as you're going through, for instance, going back to strength, if we had just gone through some chest work and we wanted to work to shoulders, all we'd have to do is transition under. Another thing from this chest stretch here, we can start to add some rotation, driving straight that way. That changes it. So now I've got my shoulders under stretch, but as I drive up, push my hip to one side, I can feel that stretch come right up through my core, my T band, TFL, so it becomes a lateral chain stretch. Okay? Now, I can also rotate my hands under and come up. Now I've got a bicep stretch. Actually, my palms are like this. If I turn my hands under this way, it'll turn more into a, an anterior shoulder stretch. Okay? I can turn like this. That pins my arm behind me, and that's a really nice neck stretch that I can do. Just rotate this side. Again, a very nice neck stretch. So all of that stuff is very easy to flow through. Even in this position, I can come forward 
and reach up. And I can feel that all the way through my abdominals and up through my lats as I go overhead. This is a great torso stretch. So it's basically a windmill up and around. So I can come up. Any rotational athlete, golfers, most people will be very tight through that transverse plane, especially through their midsection. I'm feeling that through my lats, my shoulders, but especially through my torso as I rotate around my hips. So that's another very easy stretch. You can see I can flow easily from there. I've done that. I've worked along my frontal line. I can come back this way. I can rotate straight up and around, rotate straight up and around here. You can either hold those stretches or move through them as active mobility. Let's move to some lower body stretches. Some of them we can do just from here, just by positioning one leg straight back. I can straight up, engage my glutes, drive forward, and that's a nice hip flexor stretch. And abdominal. Lengthen those arms all the way out. Let your bum fall away. Maybe move your feet back about a foot. Good. Just let that fall back. Your head fall in. Good. Now you may feel this in your hamstrings. Okay. Straighten those knees, you may feel a little bit more. Now what we can do is just get him to rotate, turn and face that side. You'll feel this lat open up, right? Turn and face the other way. Really drive this under. Good length, you feel this lat open up. Good, and as you do that, keep working from side to side. Good, and yeah, there you go. That's it, we see this knee straighten, this knee bend, go the other way. Other knee straightens, other knee bends. Good, yep, yeah, perfect. And so just work through that, and you'll see his hips start to release a little bit as he goes. So he bends, twists, and rotate. So that's a nice active stretch. You can see he's, gonna, he's pulling with this arm, getting a good lat stretch through the top hand. Excellent. Perfect. So lots going on during that stretch. We've got some hamstring stuff. You can see we've got some good thoracic spine mobility happening, and his hips starting to release as he slowly starts to move his knees in and out. A lot of people will be very, very tight in their hips. I know I struggle with this stretch as I'm doing it, um, but it's fantastic for that kind of release. So if you've got somebody who has got a little bit more mobility, you can always increase the height. So stretch forward, you feel that in the quadricep? Okay, engage your glutes, drive forward, feel that hip flexor, good. And then you can stay there if you want to add more to it. You can just reach up overhead and really you feel it now kind of abdominals, hip flexor, quadricep. Okay, both hands up and lean back. You may feel that even more with more intensity. And that's a beautiful stretch. You can see a, a, a perfect C shape she's making. And that's great mobility. Excellent. Now I want you to sit down here in front of the system. So I'll get you to roll over, sit down right here. This is a great hamstring stretch. Let's have this leg sure up and in. The other leg is down straight. Just flatten it out. Good, toe pointed up. Bend this knee, grab onto this toe. Pull this toe back a little bit with both hands. Good, and then just straighten out that leg. Good. A lot of people will feel that already. I can tell Gina's pretty flexible, so she's gonna pull that knee up, bring that head down towards the knee, and then just lean into it. And now as you go forward, now you're leaning forward a little bit, and you're going to feel that as a stronger stretch, probably calf and hamstring. And the more you pull on that toe, the more you'll feel it calf, maybe even foot, okay? The nice thing about that is you can roll into an in and out of it. So you can come back and then drive forward. Boom. Hold that for a few seconds, come back, drive forward again. So once you've held it for 20 or 30 seconds, you've got that first initial release, then you can work through it a bit more actively further and further and further. Okay? I'll show you one more thing just while you're here with me. What I want you to do is turn around and sort of sit on your knee like in a pigeon pose in yoga. So it comes. Yep, just like that, except this leg goes back behind you. But extend it way, way out. There we go, perfect. So there, now let's take this hand and just karate chop down here. Excellent. So you're probably already feeling that in your glutes a little bit and high hamstring. Now I want you to lean forward and really reach with that arm. Yeah, you can just use it for support on the ground. And lean right forward and really open up through your shoulder. And now you probably feel it glutes across your back and up in here into your lats. Okay, and again, just like before, that's easy to come straight up out of it, drive forward into it. It's a nice, smooth opening. So that's a wrap for today. I hope you found that as helpful as the trainers here at Diacotti did. What we went over today was just a brief orientation to get you up and going with the TRX. You should feel comfortable using the system, and you should have a bunch of exercises that now you can apply to yourself and your clients. We've got a lot more content and a lot more information at fitnessanywhere.com.